Hey, Gatsby here, and recently I, along with five other Synchro Enjoyers, signed up for the Cross Archetypal Discord Tournament to represent the Speedroid Archetype. After watching Complex's in-depth Galaxy Eyes combo guide, I decided the Yu-Gi-Oh! community could use more guides like it. So today I'll show you three fundamental Speedroid lines that are by no means the full extent of what the deck is capable of, but in my opinion are the most important bread and butter basics to learn. Lines that'll set a great foundation for anyone interested in the deck. While I do so, I'll indicate what points were locked into specific traits that are mostly negligible in a pure variant, finishing up with some key takeaways to consider while playing the deck. We'll begin with the most iconic wind attribute Burning Abyss Monster Speedroid Teratop. Teratop can special summon himself to an empty board and provides a search for any main deck Speedroid monster. So I'll go ahead and search for and special summon Teratop's partner in crime Speedroid Takatom board, as I control a wind attribute monster. Following this, I'll use his effect to tribute himself and special summon a Speedroid tuner from the deck, at the cost of being wind locked for the rest of the turn. It is worth noting that Takatom board can be normal summoned if you have a second copy of Takatom board, or a way to special summon him, that you can use his tuner tutor effect twice in the same turn, as the only once per turn on this card is limited to his special summon clause. But off Takatom board, I'll go ahead and special summon Speedroid Red Eye Dice, and on summon activate the effect to modulate the level of a Speedroid monster between 1 and 6. With this, I'll go ahead and make Terra top of level 2, which means we're good to synchro into high speedroid cork shooter. And on summon we can use one of two effects, where we will either add a speedroid spell or trap card from our deck to our hand, or, provided all the monsters we use for the summon are speedroids in our graveyard, special summon both of the materials back to the board with their effects intact. So using the second effect, we'll go ahead and summon dice and terror top again, and after resolving dice a second time to make terror top a level 4, we can synchro summon the linchpin for the strategy high speedroid Hagoida. Hagoida has two effects, the first being able to tribute himself to raise the level of all monsters on the field by two, and a graveyard effect to special summon himself back to the field, provided I control a speedroid tuner. But for now, we'll just synchro summon the ace monster of the deck, Crystal Wings Synchro Dragon, using a tuner plus one or more non-tuner synchro monsters. This is the most basic fundamental line that Speedroid has to offer. Without using a normal summon, Teratop is able to board quite a bit of advantage, while also setting up cards in the graveyard for future plays through things like Hagoida. Let's proceed with the next line with Konami's consolation prize to the Speedroid archetype, Speedroid Marble Machine. Marble Machine, just like Teratop, can search for any Speedroid monster. However, unlike Teratop, it requires a normal summon and immediately locks us into wind monsters. And this time around, I'll search for Speedroid Card Turbo, who once per turn can be special summoned provided I control a wind monster. Here, it's worth noting that Marble Machine is a Pendulum Monster. Had I searched for Takatomborg, went into Dice for Cork Shooter, I'd be required to search a Speedroid Spell or Trap, as Marble Machine goes to the face-up extra deck when leaving the field. So, with the Special Summon card Turbo and Marble Machine, we can link Summon into the deck's biggest hand trap bait, High Speedroid Rubber Band Shooter. Shooter has two effects, the first of which allows us to banish a Wind Attribute Synchro Monster, select two Speedroid Monsters from the deck whose levels total the Banished Synchro Monster, and then randomly add one to the hand. Sometimes banishing a level 6 is very valid, but most of the time you'll be sticking to banishing a level 7 and selecting Speedroid Double Yo-Yo and either Terratop or Ultra Hound, who we'll get to later. For now, I'll select Terratop, and for the sake of showing an optimal line, I'll show you what happens when Double Yo-Yo gets added to your hand, although it doesn't change entirely too much. Using Shooter's second effect, I'll conduct a second normal summon of a Wind Monster, which will lock me into summoning Synchro Monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn. On normal summon, Double Yo-Yo's effect activates to special summon the Terratop from the grave, which allows us to go into the previously showcased line, search and special Takatom board, tribute for dice, do a quick Cork Shuffle, and end up on a position where we can level modulate the Cork Shooter to have access to just about any tool we need. Lastly, I'll end with my personal favorite, Speedroid Ultra Hound. The reason why it's my favorite is because it reads like a custom card. Foolish Burialing, one Speedroid card from the deck to the graveyard on normal summon. Ideally, you would send Speedroid Duplicate, decrease the level of a Speedroid monster on the field by one, and special summon itself as a level one tuner. But there are also times when you can instead pitch Speedroid Dinden Daiko Duke, who in grave can banish himself to special summon a Speedroid tuner from the hand or grave. For now, I'll send Duplicate, using its effect in Grave to set up two Wind Monsters on the board. And if you're paying attention, you see that we have the requirements for the Shooter line. So instead, I'll show you a two-card combo if you have access to Takatomborg. After special summoning Takatomborg, again, I will summon the Red-Eyed Dice. But instead of modulating the already level 2 Ultra Hound, we can modulate the Speedroid Duplicate. And unlike Marble Machine, Ultra Hound can go to the graveyard. So after a quick Quirk Shuffle and making a Hagoida using the Ultra Hound as a level 4, you end on a line that Special Summons Crystal Wing and a secondary Synchro option depending on what level the Duplicate was modulated to. 
best part here is that now that Ultra Hound is in the graveyard on the crackback with an empty board and no cards in hand, Ultra Hound can activate its effect to banish itself, returning a Speedroid from the graveyard to the deck and special summoning a Speedroid Synchro monster from the extra deck with the same level but different name. So, provided you use the level 3 in the last turn, you're able to shuffle it back to make a Cork Shooter for free. And now that you control a Speedroid Tuner, you can use Segoida's effect to special summon itself back for great follow up options like High Speedroid Kite Dream. Now that you've seen the basics, here are some key takeaways to consider when playing Speedroids. Rubber Band Shooter is always Plan B. This card is a hand trap magnet and is a very huge choke point for the deck that most players will be looking for. Consider using it as a recovery option to climb into one card starters. Getting Hagoida into rotation is extremely important. Paired with cards like Ultra Hound and Din Din Daiko Duke, having access to a free 5 opens up a lot of strong follow up. And in some matchups, the ability to change the level of everything on the board can end a turn. Extra deck space is extremely tight. When selecting your extra deck, consider what bases you'd like to cover before making your extra deck too top heavy. It's very important to understand what you need for a successful build versus what you want. And lastly, extenders, extenders, extenders. I'm going to end the video with my personal list, but I highly suggest you find what works best for you. As with any combo deck, there's no shortage of useful combo fodder. But if you want a more comprehensive list, Ignis Kid has his crystal clear guide with an overview of some of the extenders that exist, featuring someone you might know. For anyone interested in the deck, I'd suggest checking out the Speedroid Discord as a resource. And after we finish up Cat, there will likely be videos posted there for both deck lists and replays from the event. Thanks for watching.